There are usually long lineups at our thrift store in the morning. And it seems like more and more, I'm not finding anything good. It's just been kind of a needle in a haystack. And there's a lot of junky items to sift through, but I guess that's all part of the fun of thrifting. And it's always so much fun when you do find a treasure. So I ended up taking this picture home and there looks like there was a little bit of maybe water damage on the back, but more and more, I'm not finding anything when I go thrifting. And so many times I come out empty handed. Um, I found this sort of antique looking picture and it's kind of in this frame that could also be used as a tray. And the painting on it, I really like. It's sort of a, it reminds me of an old Dutch or Flemish style painting. And I really like the dark in the background. And I love the sort of sagey green color in there. And then I also love the roses and the bird. And I really love nature scenes and flower scenes, anything like that. It's also got this sort of detail here, which I really like. So I thought this was a really great find for only $3 and 50 cents. And it's just been so hard to find things at the thrift stores around here. They've been so busy all summer and prices are getting higher and higher at the thrift stores as well. So I'm really picky about what I get and I try to get a really good price. My husband just got back. <laughs> okay, so really quickly, I found this string of fish hooks plant and I've got a store in town that I can get plants at for a better price, but it's not as fancy of a store. So I went there to look and I found this for, I believe I paid $12.99 and I'm thinking I might repot it and put it somewhere, but I'm really looking for more house plants for the winter. So anyways, let's get into some of the desserts I made this week. I found this recipe for an upside down cake. And the exciting thing is that you can use any fruit that you want, whether it be apples, pears, or even pineapple or berries. So I got an entire case of peaches at our local grocery store and they are not local peaches. They're actually shipped in from the States because all of our local peaches actually didn't make it this year. Uh, any of our stone fruit was damaged by the weather this past year. And so the only option was for them to ship them in but these peaches are nothing like the ones that we would get locally because they've probably been picked while they were still green. So I can't take the skins off of them. And so the best option is to make something with them. So I need to put some butter at the bottom of this cake pan and then some brown sugar as sort of a base layer. And then I'm going to layer the peaches on top of this. And then you pour your batter over top of it. It's very simple and yet a really elegant and show-stopping dessert that takes very little time. And it only took me about two peaches to make this dessert. I ended up adapting the original recipe for the batter. It's called cottage pudding, and I have found a recipe in a lot of different vintage cookbooks. And I ended up adapting it so that I could use some of my sourdough discard because I am really working on getting my sourdough starter back up to speed. Uh, it's kind of been sitting in the fridge all summer, and so I'm trying to use it 
And I also wanted to include buttermilk because that's something I had to use. So I tested out the original recipe and then my recipe adapted a couple of times and I had a lot of peaches to use. I still have a lot and I prefer my version, but I will put both of them down below. My husband brought in some celery that we are growing and he's been working on growing this for quite a while. It takes months to get celery going and he also has some celery ac, which isn't even close to being done, but the celery is harvestable. So I'm going to be able to use it in my soups and different dishes. I was just so excited about trying out this recipe and I was so surprised when I flipped it over and found the results of this upside down cake. And I really think that you can impress your family or guests with this recipe. We had this for dessert one night after having a really nice pork roast dinner and it was just exceptional. And I had it with a maple walnut ice cream and it was sinfully delicious. The next thing that I found a recipe for that I really wanted to give a try uh, was an old fashioned rice pudding. And now this is a very old recipe that I found because it was in a book from the 1950s and yet it was called old fashioned. So you know it's an old recipe. However, I consulted my mom on this recipe because um, she used to make it quite often while I was growing up. And so I wanted to ask her a few questions and she actually ended up giving me a newer recipe that she uses that's for the crock pot. And so I decided to give that recipe a try and I'll put it down below and I will also include the old fashioned recipe as well. And so anyways, I, wanted to give it a try and she told me that she uses raw sugar because my mom likes to be health conscientious and I decided to try it out with using honey and I kind of regret this decision only because it changed the color quite a bit of the rice pudding and in my memory of when I was growing up my mom would make it in the oven and she would pull it out in a nice baking dish and it would be creamy white with dots of dark raisins. And so that's really the old fashioned recipe that I had in my mind. So I might have to try the old fashioned one because the crock pot one was good, but I honestly have such vivid memories of that old fashioned rice pudding. Both of the recipes in today's video I found in my Fanny Farmer cookbook and it's an older copy from the 1950s. And so anyways, uh, yeah, this rice pudding was delicious and the first bite that I took of it really brought me back in time to those childhood memories. And if you've never tried a rice pudding, it might sound 
kind of weird to you, but it really doesn't taste like rice. It's it's very hard to explain, but it's kind of similar, I suppose, to a tapioca pudding. It's got the texture of the rice, but it's got the creaminess from the milk and it's just delicious. Something that kids definitely would like. And then you can top it with a little bit of cinnamon or nutmeg. And it's just a very warming dish this time of year. Now that I've got this antique looking picture home, I'm going to spend some time cleaning it up a little bit and then trying to find an appropriate spot to put it. And quite often I pass up pictures that I find at the thrift store because I just don't know where I would put it. And I don't like to have cluttered walls in the house, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Now that we're headed into the colder months, I am purchasing house plants and trying to get a green thumb when it comes to house plants. So I'm repotting them and it's just nice to have some green foliage around and it just makes a, a space feel cozy and inviting. Now, I really, really do love this picture, and I decided to kind of move it around different locations in the kitchen and living room and see where it's going to look best. And to be honest, I don't have a, a ton of wall space because there's a lot of windows and cupboards, and so wall space is kind of limited, to be honest and it makes it a challenge. And so I decided to take this other picture down and see if it would work above the kitchen table. But to be honest, it was just too small for that space. So that wasn't going to work. And over the fireplace, I found it competing with the large mirror. So I didn't think that was going to work. And then I've got a little wall space near my stove, but it seemed a little bit too cluttered in there with my um, copper pots. And it would look nice above the stove, but I really like having my copper pots. Um, another space was under here in my kitchen and I just had to play around and see what was going to work. This spot was a really nice spot to put it, but because it's our back door and we come in through there a lot, I don't know if it's going to work. And then I also tried it above this doorway and it is high, but I decided to leave it there for now. If you have an eye for decorating, give me some tips on what you think looks best. It just seems like nowhere is working but I love the picture, so I need some help, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna have those recipes listed down below for you guys. And I really wanna thank you for stopping by the farmhouse today and cozying up with me. Let me know if thrift hauls is something that you're interested in and you'd like to see more of because I am an avid thrifter. I love thrifting. And we only have two, th we only have two thrift stores in our town here. But when I go to visit my daughter in a few towns over, there is some really great antique shops and things, which would be really fun to take you to. So I'd love to know if that interests you. And 
and thanks so much for stopping by.